Welcome to Chapter 1, Lesson 2. We're going to continue to learn about the Alice environment and to set our scene for the fish and the sharks. Remember to open your notes document and answer the questions as you go through this video lecture. What we're going to learn in this video lecture is more, we're going to just do a review of what Lesson 1 was about. Then we're going to review the object tree, what an instance is, and go through the methods panel. We're not going to be talking about ancestry and class hierarchy today. So remember the scene editor will show you the objects over here in the object tree and it lists everything that's there. We're always going to have the ground and the camera. You can also go back to your code by clicking on the edit code button. So you'll find the object tree here. You'll also find it over on the left hand side in the methods panel. Okay, so remember, every world has the ground and the camera. And the methods panel will list each object and the different methods or actions that that object can do. And when you create an object, you're creating an instance of that class. You can give it a name and it will show you what class it's from. So this is a dragon baby and it's part of the quadruped superclass. Now in our next lecture, we're going to, the little video clip, we're going to learn more about moving our objects around on our world. So we're going to learn about the space and the directions that our objects can move. So up, down, left, right, and forward, backward. This video demonstrates the basic principles of object motion and rotation in the Alice 3 virtual environment. The key to understanding object motion in the Alice environment is recognizing that an Alice object exists in a virtual three-dimensional space. In that space, an object has a specific location. We might think of that position as x, y, and z coordinates, but the ALICE system does not typically refer to these values. An ALICE object can move freely in the environment. And can even collide or intersect with other objects in the scene. Every ALICE object has a pivot point, which is the point of reference for movement and rotation of the object. This pivot point is typically at the base of the object. Every ALICE object has an orientation, a sense of its own forward direction, up direction, and right direction. An ALICE object is absolutely self-centered, meaning that every object's motion or rotation is based on its own orientation. This concludes the video demonstration of the basic principles of object motion in ALICE 3. In this series of screencasts, we continue to demonstrate how to use the Alice 3 Scene Editor, which allows you to create your Alice world by adding and positioning characters, scenery, and props. This screencast will demonstrate how to use the one-shot procedural methods for more precise positioning of objects in a scene. As a reminder, this is an example that is being created for this series of screencasts. In this example, a clownfish and a blue tangfish first meet a shark. As the two small fish are talking, a shark will suddenly appear. The clownfish will panic, swimming away to look for a place to hide. He will find a treasure chest and hide in it. In the screencast, adding objects and moving objects, we've been building the scene with a clownfish, blue tang, a shark, a cave, a sunken pirate ship, and a treasure chest. If you wish to work along with the screencast, pause this video, 
Start Alice, and open the accompanying world One Shot's Start. This project starts where we left off in the Moving Objects screencast. We will fine-tune the scene we have built thus far by moving the shark back out of sight and opening the lid of the treasure chest. Before going to the scene editor, let us take a minute to look at the code editor. In the code editor, select the shark from the instance menu. In the methods panel of the code editor, click on the procedures tab, which will show us the procedures for our shark. A program statement in Alice instructs an object to perform a particular action. These program statements are called methods. In the Methods panel, in the Code Editor contains two tabs for different types of program statements for Alice objects. Procedural methods are actions or behaviors that an Alice object can perform. Functional methods are program statements that ask a question of an Alice object, generating an answer that is returned. Click on the Procedures tab in the Methods panel. It turns out that we are able to use some of these procedures in the scene editor. Using these procedures as one-shots provides more precise control of setting up our objects in a scene. If you are still in the code editor, click on the Setup Scene button to return to the scene editor of Alice. On the right-hand side of the scene editor, you will see the control panel. This is the instance menu of the scene editor. Here I am selecting the shark from the instance menu. Like the code editor, this menu allows you to select the object in the scene you wish to work with. Of course, you can also click on the object in the scene as well. Thinking about the story we are building, the clownfish and the blue tang are talking when the shark swims into view to join the conversation. At this moment in setting up our scene, the shark is currently in position to join the conversation. We want to move the shark back to its starting position. We can do this by trying to position the shark with our mouse, but we will not know exactly where it is, complicating the code for this animation. We want to take advantage of procedural methods to more precisely position the shark at its starting position. In the control panel on the right side of the scene editor, underneath the instance menu you will see a button named OneShots. Click on this button and a drop-down menu appears. Select the arrow next to Procedures, and a submenu will appear with a list of procedures. These are many of the same procedures that we saw listed in the Procedural Methods tab in the Code Editor. We will be able to use these procedures in the Scene Editor to help us in setting up the scene. Another way to get the One Shots menu is to right-click on the object in the Scene View. Select the Move procedure from the menu. You will then present it with a series of submenus allowing you to specify which direction and how far you would like the shark to move. Select Backward and then select Custom Decimal Number. In the keypad that appears, type the value 50, then click OK. The shark will then move backwards 50 meters to its starting position for this scene. Now practice using one-shot methods to assist you in further positioning other objects in your scene. In this screencast, we demonstrated how to use the Alice 3 one-shot procedural methods of the scene editor, which allow you to have more precise control in positioning and orienting characters, scenery, and props. Now that you've seen that video and you've learned more about setting up the scene, You've probably positioned your fish and your shark just where they're supposed to go. But you also need to have some props. So I'm going to have you um, stop the lecture and add the two props, two of the three props that you need to complete the scene. You're going to add the cave and the ship. So you're going to go back to your scene editor and you're going to, from the gallery, use the search. So you're going to search for cave and you're going to get something like this and you can pick the cave that you want. The one in the video is pretty much like this one but or the dark one. You can pick the one that you'd like to use. You're also going to search for ship and select the pirate ship and then you're going to have to rotate it or roll it a little bit so it's kind of on its side sunk at the bottom of the sea. 
So go ahead and stop the video, add those two props to your scene, and make it look as closely as you can to the example in the video. Then start this lecture up again, and we're going to talk about how to do the treasure chest. This video will demonstrate how to position the subparts of an object in the scene editor using one-shot procedures. At the end of the positioning subparts video, you are challenged to add a treasure chest object to your world and open its lid. We are now going to demonstrate the solution to this exercise, but we are going to use one-shot procedures to give us better control of the positioning of the lid. Now, let us add the treasure chest to the scene. Click on the Props Gallery. Scroll through the gallery until you find the Treasure Chest class. As an alternative, you may use the Search Gallery tab to find the treasure chest. Add a treasure chest object by double-clicking on the Treasure Chest class button, or drag the picture of the treasure chest into the Scene View window. Click OK to accept the name of this treasure chest and to add it to your scene. Adjust the position of the chest if you wish. In the Properties panel of the Scene Editor, select the treasure chest from the drop-down menu, then drag over to the right subpart menu arrow. Select the chest lid from the drop-down list. We could use the rotational handles to open the lid but we will not know exactly how far we have turned the subpart. This will complicate any code we later want to write for an animation to close the lid. Instead, we will use the one-shots menu to turn the lid backwards one quarter of a rotation. Click on the one-shots menu, select the turn procedure, select backwards as the turn direction, and select 0.25 for the amount of the rotation. The treasure chest lid has now opened and is ready to be used in our program. In this video, we have looked at how to position the subparts of an object in the scene editor using one shot procedures. So let's just do a little review of the things that have been going on in the video lectures. Talk to you a lot about the object itself, where its center is, it's usually on the ground. Talked about um, the different ways of learn remembering where to describe it. It could be with X, Y, and Z, so forward, back, left, right, and up, down. And also we can talk about it spatially, where it is, going forward, going up, going back and it can move in six different directions. Now if you need more information about the subparts, you can go ahead and look at the rest of the slides, but I'll leave that up to you to determine if you want to learn more or if you feel like you're comfortable working with subparts. This is a handy feature if you've gone this far in the video lecture to learn about the opacity because you can make things kind of faint like this. That's a pretty cool feature. 